Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. We are here on day two of installing uh, the major bones to the Proven Winter Signature Garden here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina, Zone 8A. Uh, you were with us yesterday when we installed the shrubs. Today is perennial day. We are going to get the perennials in and then go ahead and top dress these beds with some delicious compost to really um, kind of act like the mulch and feed these plants throughout the winter. So we're gonna do a really quick little recap of what happened yesterday. Andrew has already started on a new project, so we'll do a little quick overview of that. If you missed yesterday's video when we installed the shrubs, I would encourage you to go back and look at that video because I go through and I name all the different plants that we have already planted thus far. I'm just gonna give you a really quick overview right now. I'm not gonna hit every single plant. So go back and check that out for sure. I am standing in the back corner. Of course, here we are the last week of November. Uh, we are here, really it's almost uh, before lunchtime because we had a later start this morning because it was 19 degrees this morning and the top portion of the ground was, uh, it was pretty frosty and pretty, pretty frozen. So as soon as the sun hit it, it has thawed back out and we are good to go. Now, I am standing on, obviously, the back side of the signature gardening. And here we are, I'm going to give you, get, stand right here in the middle. With this layout, this portion of the signature garden is pretty formal, right? So we have those hard lines. You can see that Jerry has, um, had it, has it spray painted and you can see nice, strong, straight lines in here and the, what we did is yesterday the four outside corners have been planted with the vast majority of those are shrubs there are some perennials in there but each of the four corners they are um, balanced as far as the types of plants that are in there but they are not planted identical so what do i mean by that i mean by in each of these four outside corner beds there is a summerific hibiscus in the center of them each four beds is a different hibiscus for example this one is the summerific lilac crush so that happens also in the back corner of all four beds we have three evergreen shrubs that really define that back corner in a nice strong triangle each bed has evergreen shrubs but they are different. And then as we go through, each bed will have some hydrangeas, but then a little bit of different specimens in there, different focal points. So just lots of fun in here. I wanted to make sure that these beds were balanced so that the garden was balanced, but I didn't want everything matchy matchy. I did not want all four outer beds to be planted the exact same. There are too many beautiful plants out here to plant them all the exact same. Andrew is working on putting a very nice low, um, I don't even want to call it a retaining wall because it's not holding anything back. It's more just for some beautiful structure because we talked about it yesterday. He, ins he did install, um, I guess you could call it a retaining wall, more just a low wall around the raised beds. So we have that, get some nice hard structure there. Repeating that with the same block. This is the Weston block from Belgard. Same stuff that we used on our back patio. And he's coming in with the, um, the curved pieces. This is the three piece system. So they're all three different sizes. They are curved. We're doing one, one layer and then we're gonna put a cap on it. it. Gives it some nice edge. So that way we don't have to worry about any of the mulch coming in um, because this all will be grass. We're gonna lay down some sod as soon as we get all of the perennials in. Last little recap, remember there are four inner beds and these four inner beds have some fun shape to them and they are all going to be annuals. So annuals will get planted in that and probably I might plant some pansies. We're, we're growing some pansies. We'll see how they do and how the weather does. Um, might go ahead and get those planted this season. In future falls, we will definitely plant violas and pansies and fall annuals in here. Depending on how this goes, because we're in construction, these four beds may just lay bare this season. And then come springtime, we'll plant them with annuals. So 
that is a recap of what has happened so far. We do have a whole playlist of the signature garden, so I will link that so you can feel free to check that out as well. Now, yeah, these are all the amazing plants that I get to use. Some of these are still some shrubs that we have left over that did not go into the signature garden in the formal space. We've talked about it many times before that we are going to continue the signature garden in the outer beds throughout um, this space. Jerry has already, well, actually we started doing it yesterday. You can see probably those white cans up here along the creek bank. Hopefully if the uh, day allows, we will get those in the ground, but those are going to be less formal areas, more just traditional gardens, right? Not the hard lines, lots of fun in there. So we're going to use what we have left over in those spaces. So not only there, but eventually we will continue all the way up here around the back of the pond and in this lovely grove of trees that we have back here. There are going to be gardens everywhere, my friends. Perennials. Let's go through just a real quick um, overview of some of the perennials that we have um, before us and we will find out exactly how they go in the bed as we go through this whole process. Amsonia. Amsonia is a great, hardy, low maintenance, easy perennial. I have two different ones right here. We have storm cloud, which is you can see has a really nice big leaf on it. And then in the back, we have string theory. They are both Amsonias, very different looking in their structure. Clearly, Amsonias have beautiful fall foliage. I have some of the string theory in the berm, took a picture of it. I think it was last week and it was glowing. It was yellow. Um, this is a native perennial. So it is native to North America in the spring. Gorgeous, true blue flowers on it. Love Amsonia. Very, very um, easy, low maintenance. What we'll do is, you know, once the foliage kind of dies back some more, we'll just actually just whoosh, cut it off. Very, very easy. We've got daisies. The amazing daisies is the line from Proven Winners. Love these. Now, some look a little bit better than others in here. We've got Daisy May. We've got Banana Cream too. Just gorgeous Shasta daisies that will go into the garden. Beautiful, classic daisies, right? Um, Daisy May is definitely the classic Shasta daisy. Pure, massive white flowers. Really, really nice. The one thing I would say about the Shasta daisies is make sure that you don't put them in a wet area. They hate with having wet feet. Nephophia. We have got Nephophia out the wazoo. Uh, Nephophia is also known as red hot pokers. Now, the fun uh, line from Proven Winners and our friends at Walters Gardens, because remember Walters Gardens is the home of all the Proven Winner perennials, they have a whole line of the Nephophia called the Pyromania series. And the Pyromania series, given its name, very bright, bold, hot colors. And they, would, they range from a flaming red to a very nice soft yellow. There's oranges in there. They tend to have more of an ombre effect where they will get as the newer flower petals are nice and dark. The older ones sometimes will mature to like a cream. So you have this beautiful effect of an ombre effect on the flowers. Really, really nice. For us, where we are, North Carolina Zone 8A, my nephophia will be an evergreen. So even in the dead of winter, I will still have that green foliage. A lot of people will think it is a grass. It's not a grass. I understand why you may think that, especially like right now, because it has a very much of a grass-like appearance. But what we'll do is, and right before spring comes, we'll cut it back so all of the new foliage will flush out and it'll be nice and beautiful. So those are great, of course. We've got, we do have a lot of shade perennials. Not gonna deal with those now. Those are gonna go um, around the pond and in the shadier areas up in here. The signature garden in the formal lines is definitely going to be way too hot and sunny for those. So we will kind of um, leave them be. We also have Achillea. Achillea is um, also known, common name, as Yarrow. This is like the Firefly series. So we have Firefly Sunshine, which is a beautiful yellow. 
you've got like uh I think it was peach sky lots of different colors these are great drought tolerant beautiful beautiful um, almost like a fern like foliage on it now remember we did get down to 19 last night so they're looking a little looking a little rough right now um, but you can see and they also kind of remind me of carrot tops you know how carrots will have that kind of that frilly um, look to it that's what it reminds me of but these things are just non-stop bloomers beautiful way to add color and a little bit of height to your garden but they are not invasive old timey yarrow would be quite a nuisance in the garden because it would just spread right you once you got it I man it was hard to get rid of this is a very very well behaved plant extremely um well behaved in the garden nice i love the sunshine the firefly sunshine because it's just a bright cherry yellow so we've got lots of those that we will use as well uh let's see oh the serendipity alliums right serendipity alliums are of course um alliums are onions these are ornamental onions <laughs> they are like whoo wee it was cold last night but pollinators love this big um, mounds of purple flowers on them like the very uh, spherical balls basically gorgeous gorgeous plants love those um, daylilies my gosh we have got some ginormous huge beautiful daylilies that we are going to use daylilies again super low maintenance very easy um, but the rainbow rhythm series is great because they have massive flowers on them so we have um, I think we have some blood sweat and tears right here blood sweat and tears is a is one of the newest ones um, kind of a raspberry red with a yellow throat to it and then let's see the daylily is here this is a storm shelter and storm shelter oh my gosh y'all it is a beautiful like a purple and pink oh gorgeous absolutely stunning we've got some yellow ones we've got all different kinds of daylilies i'm a huge fan of the daylilies from proven winners because they are just absolutely gorgeous gorgeous plants and then we have some last ones that we're going to kind of look at are the um, eucomus so eucomus is a really fun new perennial that is um, in the proven winners line it was new last year and we have two different ones we have <laughs> first of all 19 degrees eh, they didn't like that so much last night uh, when andrew and everybody was helping unload this he was like it looks kind of tropical and he was right because it's actually it's not really tropical but it's hot weather um, originates in africa so crowning glory is the series and this is princess bride princess bride and then we also have purple rain pineapple lilies i believe is, is their common name but these are nice big beautiful plants they are um, more of like a bulb like root system to them and we can plant them really close together and they will just make this beautiful beautiful spread um it's really funny so just to kind of you know give you a little you know kata right kata is our precious friend who is our rep from walter's gardens and she loves these plants those eucomus she absolutely loves them i have not seen mine flower yet in the berm and so i'm kind of like meh and she was like just wait i'm gonna prove you wrong so I trust her because the woman has not led me wrong on anything yet. So I trust her. We're going to put them in the garden and they're going to be stunning. So what we're going to do is basically kind of like what we did yesterday is go through and I want the beds to be balanced, but not matchy matchy. So we probably will have daylilies in all the beds, but not every single bed will have the exact same number or the exact same type of daylily. So we will spread them out, have fun with it. This is the fun part for me. It is a fun design process. I am not that gardener that has everything exactly laid out on paper with, um, you know, a, a blueprint of where everything is going to go. That's just not how I garden. That's not how my brain works. I have to be in the space. I have to see the plants, think about the plants and just move them and touch them and move them around. So that is how my brain works and how I come up with these designs. So I can't tell you exactly how it's going to come out or where the plants are exactly going to go because I don't know yet. We're going to find that out together, but it is a beautiful, bright, just gorgeous blue sky 
chilly day, but the sun's out, so we're nice and toasty. We're going to get these babies in the ground and then come back up through. Like I said, we've got loads of beautiful Lanasy compost. We're going to top dress all the beds. Um, and then um, basically the planting for this season will be done. Uh, yeah, so it's exciting. So without further ado, let's get to work. friends so what I've done is I have laid out one of the quadrants and I'm gonna walk you through kind of show you um, what I have done and explain my design process in from my brain into you hopefully it'll translate well um, and then Jerry and I are going to attack this bed we're going to use our power planter augers we're going to use of course our biotone we're gonna get everybody in the ground um, and then we're just gonna kind of go from quadrant to quadrant and get it all done uh, I'm gonna ask <laughs> my sweet people to come help us and we're gonna get it all laid out and get them in the ground so let's walk through this quadrant and let me explain to you um, how I came up with the design that I did and talk about the plants that are in this space so this is the back quadrant right it is the it's the back right side of the signature garden every outside quadrant has the cat's meow nepeta in it so this of course is going to be a nice lovely blue and so this flower bed kind of went a little bit more with the yellows and the pinks because here in this flower bed is the summerific valentine's crush which is a very columnar upright green foliage with really bright cheery red flowers on it now keep in mind that summerifics do not start blooming for us until probably um, the beginning of july so just keep that in mind with that in mind we did like i said yellows we've got the three of the firefly sunshine achillea right here these tend if they are happy they will be like continuous bloomers so when valentine's crush is blooming with red we'll have solid yellow over here that will complement quite nicely early spring well not say early spring late spring early summer we have got some salvia this is my absolute favorite perennial salvia this is pink profusion and i did three of them we're gonna have three of them in every single quadrant and i did them in a straight line do something a little different right so pink profusion is going to be 14 to 16 inches tall really nice upright flowers on them gorgeous gorgeous pink so we did that so the pink profusion will be blooming at the same time as the cat's meow so we've got pink and blue together behind here that hydrangea is the quick fire fab panicle it 
could be blooming at the same time as the salvia. Not quite sure on that. Then coming back, you notice that I did it kind of in a little bit of a funky uh, shape here. I've got one, two, and then three. This is the opening act romance phlox. This is the early blooming phlox. Now it's not it's not the ground cover phlox that is the super early phlox, right? This would be like a mid bloomer. It is a beautiful kind of a pink fuchsia color. If the hibiscus, which could be blooming, if they were blooming at the same time, we might have a color clash, right? But they're going to be blooming at two different times, so it's all right. And just gorgeous, like loaded in flowers. Have a little bit, definitely an upright columnar habit to it. So I like how we kind of have a little bit of a, a swoosh here, right? We're laying them out in different. We're not putting them all in triangles or all in circles um, or all in straight lines. We're mixing it up. Way back in the back, we're going to hit these right quick. I have the Storm Cloud Amsonia. And then up front, I have String Theory. String Theory is going to be shorter. Storm Cloud is going to be taller. They are both going to be blooming roughly within at the same time. So they will both have the blue flowers and then in the fall, they will both mirror each other with that bright gold foliage. Thought that would be really fun. Again, now you're like, well, Jenny, you planted it directly behind the hibiscus. Okay, keep in mind, hibiscus is not gonna be emerging until later on. When the storm cloud is nice and full and flowering, the hibiscus will just be beginning to put up some growth. So it's not going to hide it. And then once the hibiscus is up, the storm cloud is finished flowering and we're good. Plus you can see it from the other side. Now, as a specimen, we did a Tuscan gold heliopsis. If you remember in the berm, I have this um, in mass planting. Now right now, clearly not much of a plant, right? It's just a pot. This is a continuous blooming, it's in the sunflower family, bright, cheery solid yellow flowers it's going to be a little bit taller in that about that two foot height which would be a great specimen right here so we've got one of those like i said long long blooming love that one and then the narda here we have the um, upscale lavender taffeta did those three together they're going to the height on this is going to be let me look again yeah about two feet tall still they're going to grow together and be one big clump. Again, a beautiful, nice kind of that purple lavender color will be really nice and it will echo with the, the pinks of the salvias and the phloxes. So we got that. All right, we talked about string theory. That's good on that. Now let's whip around on this side. These three shrubs that are kind of stickish right here, this is double play doozy beautiful bright foliage raspberry red uh, flowers on it raspberry pink rather we did three boom chocolatas these are geraniums dark foliage so we've got one two and then three again i did a little bit of a different layout because if you're coming from this angle right then you're going to have two on this side and one here so that will be quite nice together. They do upright purple flowers. Love, love the sun. Very nice uh, compliments to each other. And then um, let's see, let's show you on this side. It's really hard. See, that's the thing about this bed. You can see them from all different angles. Then for some height, we did Baptisia right here. This is the pink, pink lemonade. So pink lemonade is actually going to be uh, mostly yellow with a little bit of pink in it. That will be very columnar, very upright. It is my tallest of my Baptisia. I'm going to have Baptisia in every single quadrant, but this is going to be the tallest one, um, which will work quite nicely because this is the back bed. Nice spring bloomer, and then it's just going to be gorgeous green foliage. Beside of that, all right, I am trying the Clematis. This is the new color for this year. This is Stand By Me Pink. Now, Stand By Me Pink is a bush Clematis. It starts from brand new growth. So I can actually go ahead, when we plant this, I will probably go ahead and take the trellis off and go ahead and cut it back because it comes back from brand new growth, um, blooms on brand new growth, so you're gonna to wanna to cut it back. I am not gonna have a trellis in this spot. I may regret that later, we'll find, <laughs> time will tell. 
but even proven winter sieve, you can stake it or you can um, have plants that it can support it. So we've got a jazz hens bold right here and then of course that Baptisia. They both will get some nice height to them. So we'll see if that Clematis can lean on those two plants. If not, I can easily put a little plant stand right there and it will be fine. I just don't want a big, hard, like, you know, obelisk right here. So Stand by May Pink uh, is going to be in every single quadrant. This is going to be one that's kind of iffy because it says to zone 7 and we're now in 8A. So time will tell on that. And then we have the, now I know right now it looks a little rough. Uh, this is the new Artemisia. This is Silver Bullet. Have this in the berm and it is beautiful. This new Artemisia sorry silver lining not silver bullet silver lining 12 to 16 tall but then it spreads and as it spreads it is not going to root so in the fall this time of year it's really easy to come in there and clean up i thought that nice silver blue foliage against the lower petalum would be really really pretty so going to have a specimen of one of those there and then last but not least we have the daylilies and this is king of ages this King of Ages daylily is going to be my tallest daylily, and so I can space them, I think it was 18 inches apart from each other. Pretty close. I want them to grow and look like one massive daylily. They will have those beautiful, of course, yellow flowers, ruffled edges with the kind of that red burgundy center. And then when they're not blooming, of course, we have that just great green foliage. So that is the plan what we're going to do is like i said jerry and i are going to use our augers um i am going to use oh y'all i love this thing this is the um kind of jenny's auger right so this is the one that we partnered with power planner and created this auger it is 32 inches tall so it has got some nice height to it so i don't have to bend over it is a five inch um auger but you can work it and it will put and it will you can plant one gallon plants really easy it has a heavy duty tip which i need in my clay soil and of course the limited edition it is pink you can go to our website and check this out make a great christmas present we'll ship them out right away if you're interested in this we also have them in lime green so don't don't fret if you don't like the pink we can get you a lime green one as well so i'm going to use that and then jerry has got uh my <laughs> the old drill you can see that it has the uh the remnants of the pink duct tape on there and this has the seven inch i think this is might be it's either the seven or the nine inch i can't remember which one he put on it's hard to tell sometimes when they're by themselves um because we do have those nice big three gallons right there so it's probably the nine inch on there so we're going to like i said get everybody drilled in everybody's going to get a nice healthy dose of biotone then we will go ahead and lay out the rest of the quadrants, get them planted, and then come back with land and sea. So that's the plan.
Hey friends, all right, so it is the next day. It took us a little longer to get the perennials in the ground, um, and so we did not get the land and sea out yesterday. Came back first thing this morning, and my sweet ladies are hard at work. Let me just walk through and tell you right quick what we're doing and why we are doing it. Remember, keep in mind that you can now see really definely um, these annual beds. So there's four of these, all the exact same shape. They are not gonna get planted this season unless we were able to get some pansies in um, later on in the season. But for now, they get a nice top dress of land and sea. All the beds get a top dress of land and sea compost. We are using this uh, for multiple reasons. One, we're using it as a top dress mulch. Cleans it up, everything looks nice and neat and defined, but most importantly, it is for the nutrition. Land and sea compost, um, we have used this for several years and have seen massive, massive differences in our plants, in our flower beds, how they perform when we use the compost. We have this, um, like I said, as a mulch, but you can t absolutely top dress with the compost because as we go through the winter, the wind, the rain, um, <laughs> snow, ha ha ha, if we ever were to get it, that just, it just saturates and brings that nutrition down into the soil because you have to remember, the vast majority of plants' roots are very, quote, superficial. Most plant roots do not go down for feet upon feet. Most of them will go out within the first six, eight inches, essentially, right? That's where your main root growth is for the vast majority of of plants and so when you can amend and give great nutrition to that top layer of your soil then that feeds your plants obviously we're not putting in fertilizer this time of year in the spring we may come back and add some slow release fertilizer in here that is a great thing to do especially when you're trying to get your garden established um, but this is a way for us to feed the plants enrich our soil with beautiful organic matter that really just gives the plants the best start possible because that is what we want, right? All gardeners want that. There's another layer here because this is a signature garden. This is a display garden. Um, this is going to be a very highly public garden and we want it to look its absolute best. So that is why we are top dressing with the land and sea. As a side note, it's also um, much easier to deal with compost when you have it in bags versus big bulk. So it's easy to pick up, you know, two bags at a time and carry them and put them exactly where you want them to go. So I've got uh, all, my, all my ladies here are helping me and doing an amazing job with Cece and Randy and Alyssa and getting all of this done. When you're going out and you're putting it into um, into your flower beds. You can see like what Cece is doing is wrestling that beast of a daylily because it has still has tons of growth. You don't want to cover all of that foliage with the compost. So she's lifting it up and then gonna take the land and see right up to the crown of the plant. You're not going to cover the root ball. Now, obviously we're still in the, the process right here, but you can see with this candy corn spirea, where they've taken it and just laid it around it. We're not gonna take, yes, we're gonna come in and zhuzh it a little bit like that, but we're not gonna take that compost and crowd the crown of the plant because we don't want um, to smother the plant. We want the plant to be able to breathe. And because historically here in North Carolina, we have very wet winters. And in fact, we're supposed to get like three days of rain. So that's another reason why we're trying to get this out as quickly as possible. Um, but if you have compost or mulch and it's really up around the crown of the plant, it can tend to rot. And we do not, obviously we do not want that. They have done an amazing job. We are, Jerry's working on one. I'm getting ready to jump in here too. So what we're gonna do is get the rest of this land and see out, and then we'll give you kind of a bird's eye view. And then today's project will be complete. This portion of the project will be complete. And then we're gonna move on to a fun, whole new area within the signature garden, but not within the confines of the formal garden. So we got some more land and see we're gonna put out.
today's project is complete, my friends. We're going to move on to another project here in about two seconds, but show you what it looks like right now. So stinking excited. Now, Jerry is going to put the drone up so he will give you a bird's eye view. All the shrubs are in, all the perennials in. Everybody has been land and seed and looks so nice. Um, Andrew is still finishing up on the last little layer of the um, it's not even a retaining wall the little outline of the fountain looks really really great but yeah look at all of the shrubs and the perennials just so exciting cannot wait to watch them grow and develop as the months seasons years go past it is going to be just spectacular for sure now if you're looking at the flower beds, um, you may notice that currently we still have a lot of the plant tags are uh, either stuck in the ground, like here with the um, Tuscan Gold, the Sun Joys still have their tags on them and some hydrangeas do. That is simply uh, very temporary because I'm going to come back through with permanent signs and we're gonna mark each plant. That just gets me through so that I don't have to <laughs> Go back and rewatch the video to remember what is everywhere so we're going to have that so there will be permanent signs for the plants so when customers come and people are coming through the garden and looking at them then they will know exactly what those plants are but i mean everything just is great so next project on the list one we've got to clean up so we're going to be cleaning up and get rid of all the debris we still do have when we brought the plants over we've got some shade perennials over here so those will go back into quote storage for right now until we're ready to plant the shade garden we're going to use if not all the plants the vast majority of these plants in the surrounding the flower beds and we are going to uh, go ahead and give you a little sneak peek we're going to install um, a shallow flower bed here um, on this side i think you can see where this is the line so this will all be sod right here this is a seven foot path this will be sod and then right over here on this line we'll have about a three to four foot flower bed there that will have um, some more shrubs and annuals will go in there. Really fun, so that is going to be what we're gonna start on here in just a second. Jerry ordered all of the sod yesterday, so it will be arriving, uh, should be tomorrow, which will be perfect timing because it's supposed to start raining this weekend. Get the sod in, nice gentle rain will be great for it. Um, so lots and lots going on. We are gonna hop over here to the creek bank and plant a ton of shrubs and trees and perennials in that still signature garden, just in the less formal area. So this is really fun and exciting. It is great to see it come together. Just, it's been a long time coming, my friend. And so very, very excited to get it together. Could not do it without our amazing Creekside team. Everybody is just all hands on deck and have taken wonderful ownership and just are great, great people. We have amazing people and we could not do this without them. So incredibly blessed to have them as the Creekside family. So anyway, hope you have found this fun, informative and inspirational. The project continues. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.